And when Peter was talking about the name that healed this man. And I believe the name still heals today. I believe the name still casts out fear and doubt and demons and oppression and depression and discouragement and stress. And Peter made this tremendous statement. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I want you to quote that with me now. I want you to really fasten, I guess, the, I think Brother David uh, Sanford has it up on the board, Acts 4.12. Now, and I mean this is one of those pivotal turning points of Scripture. And I mean, put your heart into it. Everybody quote it with me. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Praise the Lord. Tell me what that name is. Oh, that's right. Amen. And I, I won't get into an in-depth analysis here, but I remember in a public debate uh, when I used this and the point was brought back to me. Well, you don't know what name he's talking about there. And all you got to do is back up to verse 10. This was verse 12. Verse 10, been known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God hath raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Now one more time, quote it with me. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. I don't know whether you realize what you just said. If that's the only name, then there's no other name to be baptized into than in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. We are dealing, of course, with the only name that can save, the only way, and this is absolutely invincible. You can't argue this point. It's definitive, absolute, irrevocable, unchangeable, immutable, unquenchable, inimitable. Indomitable. You understand me? This is it. Where the rubber meets the road. There's none other name under heaven given among men. Thank God he gave it to us. Hallelujah. The name Buddha cannot save. The name... Hitler or Mussolini or Stalin or Khrushchev or any of the famous, Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, though they were great in their way, but they can't save. The name United Pentecostal Church cannot save. The name Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Episcopalian, Catholic cannot save. There's only one name that can save, and that is the name of Jesus. Give him a hand clap one more time. Hallelujah. We're dealing with this in an in-depth way. And we will begin with the fact that scriptures teach we are to believe in the name of Jesus. We're to believe in it. And now we hear, like Matthew 12, 21 said, 
And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. It's good to trust in that name. And then again, in John 1, verse 10, the Bible said he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Amen. So, he gave people the authority or the power to become the sons of God. Notice it says, even to them that believe on his name. So we believe on his name. We read, for instance, in John 2 verse 23 now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover in the feast day many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did but Jesus did not commit himself unto them now catch that because he knew all men and needed not that any should testify of man for he knew what was in man Conclusion is very simple. He ought to know what's in man because he made man. The Creator became our Savior. And many believed only because they saw the miracles. They were not ready to commit. And I hope you're not one of those who are just in this because of some pressure or problem or sickness or sorrow at the present time. This too will pass. But you've got to commit yourself. The name of Jesus is mine to love and to keep from the moment I believe in him until I die. And Jesus knew they were not ready for him to commit himself unto them. Now going to John 3 and 18, the Bible said, He that believeth on him is not condemned. But notice... He that believeth not is condemned already. Now, folks, this is simple. You don't have to do anything to be condemned already if you don't believe in the name of Jesus. He that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now, the word name is onom in the Greek, meaning the proper name of a person. And it's self-evident. Matthew one twenty one, the angel told Joseph, She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name, his onoma, his proper name. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Not in their sins, from their sins. And so the name of Jesus is the only salvation name of God. A reading of Isaiah 12, I'll just pull a phrase out, God has become my salvation. So that's what the name Jesus means, Jehovah becomes our salvation. In Matthew 1, 23 and 4, this is all done and it might be fulfilled which is spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying behold a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. So Jesus was not an angel with us. He was God with us. And this name that was revealed to us is the name of Jesus is the only salvation name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I know this is a little rough and tough in a sense, but I'm just telling you, there's none other name. So you don't need to be going to any other kind of religiosity or philosophy or ideology or psychology or ideology that espouses some other way or some other name. Now, you better understand what I'm saying. This is it. It's where the rubber meets the road and the cow eats the cabbage and the mop flops. 
Don't try to go any other way. I'm telling you the name of Jesus is the only name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Isn't that the reason you're here? You want to be saved. And that's the only name that saves. Man, if you really got a hold of that, you wouldn't miss so much church. You'd pay your tithe. You'd give to missions. You'd be saying, what can I do anyway, anyhow? I'm willing because that name is the name that saves and I love it. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Now back to John three eighteen. He that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Lots of people don't show up to a real Holy Ghost church that preaches the Word of God because they know they're not doing as they should and they're afraid they're going to be exposed. But the next verse said, But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. So if you're really sincere and you're wanting to do right and to be truthful and live true, you'll come to the light. I mean, there's a lot to be said about this. In the evening time there shall be light. These are bad times, and they're getting worse. Word of God said, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. I'm just telling you, it's not going to get better. It's probably, no doubt, going to get worse. So we need to embrace this truth. This is just not an idea. This is not just a scheme. This is not just a program. This is not just some man's opinion. This is God's word. His name is the only name. Come on now. Get in it. Get with it. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. And now there's a reading in Acts 8 verse 12. I think it's very illuminative. But when they believe Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. So they preached the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. And that's what every Holy Ghost, Jesus name, tongue-talking church should be doing, is preaching the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized. Now you can't tell me when Philip preached the name of Jesus Christ, then he went out and baptized in the titles, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now you dad, that just strikes in the very face of authenticity and consistency. In fact, if you read in the revival in Samaria, Acts eight sixteen, it said only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So Peter preached the things concerning the kingdom of God. Now the kingdom of God, real quick like, is not meat and drink. Now I, I, I think it's wonderful. We have fall festivals and Christmas with pastors. I'm not saying a thing against these outreaches. But that's not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God's not meat and drink. But righteousness and peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So the kingdom of God concerns the Holy Ghost. Oh, God Almighty, let the Holy Ghost fall. Let the Spirit of God be with us. Let us feel your presence. Now, there's another verse in 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 20 that said the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. That's what we need. We need the power. (laughs) 
you know, Paul said himself, and I'm not going to get in this real deep, but in 1 Corinthians 2 and about verse 4, he said, My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Oh, God, give us a demonstration. In Jesus' name. Now, again, in 1 Corinthians 15, 50, the Bible makes a positive statement. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And that's the reason it doesn't make any difference the color of your skin, the content of your character, or the extreme elasticity and dexterity of your mind. Now, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Jesus nailed it down even further. In John 3, 3, he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And, of course, you know, as I, that Nicodemus said, how can a man be born when he's old? And, you know, the second time his mother's womb be born. Then Jesus said in verse 5, verily, verily, I say unto thee, Anytime you see that verily, verily, it means truly, truly, as an important announcement forthcoming. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, folks, this is the words of Jesus. And he said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Matthew twenty four thirty five. So what does that mean? It means except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That's what it means. What do you think? You think you're the only ones right? I'm going to say this. I think the Bible is the only right way. I'm not judging anybody's great, 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 great grandmother or grandfather or somebody back in the 16th or 17th or 18th century. So don't, don't try to pin that because they are in the hands of a just and a righteous God. And I'm not preaching to the dead. At least I don't think I am. Sometimes I wonder, not, not saying that in some insane, insensitive and idiotic, imbecilic way. I don't mean it that way. But listen, folks, if you can't respond to the Word of God, you're in trouble. And if we get to the place we have no time or room for the Word of God, we are in big trouble. The Bible speaks of a famine in the last days. And it's not a hunger for bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. So... I'm just backing up here and saying I'm not preaching to all those that are dead. I'm preaching to you that are alive. And I'm telling you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot. And if Jesus said you cannot, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Man, if you don't have the Holy Ghost this morning, I'd be jumping in this altar. I'd... If I wouldn't baptize the name of Jesus Christ, I'd be raising my hand and say, get the water ready. Because I know there's only one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And, and then again, just to nail that down, Jesus said in verse 7 of John 3, marvel not. Evidently, Nicodemus' mouth flew wide open, you know. And, uh, uh. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. But I don't know if I've got the Holy Ghost. But I wouldn't live my life that way. I'd blow a whistle and cry time out. I'm going to forget about everything else. I'm going to get in that altar till I get a renewing or a refilling or get filled, whatever it is. You say, oh, come on, preacher. Well, I'm coming on. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Praise the Lord. Jesus said in Luke sixteen sixteen that the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached. And every man... 
presseth into it. Now, I know for a fact that in these last days, it seems it's darker, more fierce. Things are really getting in tough shape in a lot of places, in a lot of areas. And I know you got to press, which means to be exceedingly forceful. You've had things in life you just couldn't let go. You had to put everything else aside and take care of business. Well, I'm trying to preach to you as best as I know how. You need to press your way into it. I know that, remember the, the uh, night I got the Holy Ghost? Uh, it was in a midweek service. And I had went across town to a neighboring church. Brother Tommy Miller's church across town in Muncie. And uh, it, it was just Bible study. Wasn't a big move of the spirit. It was kind of even on the quiet order. I remember that. And he was about to dismiss the service. And I raised my hand. (laughs) Like that. And I said, could I come and pray? Well, he wasn't going to say no. So I went marching up to the altar Make a long story short, it wasn't three minutes. I had the Holy Ghost. And, and I'd sought hard for three months, an hour or more at a time. I'd wore the patience of the saints of the Most High God slap out. I mean, I'd say, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And they'd say, say Jesus. I'd say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And I repented of everything I knew and everything I didn't know. And I remember I even had a class ring. It was in high school, and I took it off and slung it. I don't even know where it went. I might even hit somebody. I don't know. But I, I prayed so much. That lots of times I'd be through praying, and everybody was gone but one or two. You know, I about wore everybody out. And, and I fasted. I remember I told the Lord, I'm going to fast till you give me the Holy Ghost, or I die. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm here, and this is it, Lord. Well, I lasted three days as far as I could go. And uh, I told God, I said, you don't give me the Holy Ghost, God, I'm going to tell you at the judgment, you're a liar. Oh, I was playing dangerous. I know that. But he knew my heart that I wanted it. I went to what we had youth rallies that time and other churches in the area. And uh, I'd go seek at the altar then and seek. But anyhow, make a long story short. I went to that altar and God gave me the Holy Ghost. Now he can give you the Holy Ghost right here this morning. You can be baptized in Jesus' name right here this morning. The name of Jesus is the only name. Get that out of your mind that there's other ways. There is no other name. I've talked to people and debated and all that stuff. And and I've got 48 different things. That Bible teaches, in fact, I really got 50 things the Bible teaches we do in the name of Jesus. And I've talked to some of these others of different persuasions. And they say, yeah, we believe. Cast out devil's name, yes, we believe. Heal the sick in Jesus, yes, we believe that. But it seems very odd to me when it comes to baptism. They suddenly get amnesia. And I'm not preaching on baptism necessarily this morning. But they baptize in the titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And I've already given you from Scripture 1,311 titles. I've recited them to you, which I personally investigated and discovered in every verse of the Old Testament. I went through twice, the New Testament three times, every verse. And I found many titles. But there's only one name. There's only one name. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, everybody. I would to God, this would sound an alarm. If we've got the truth and we do have it, let's stand for it. Let's sing it. Let's shout it. Let's preach it. Let's embrace it. And let's get excited about it. This is a Jesus name church. We are Jesus name P. 
people. First John 3, verse 23. And this is his commandment. That we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. And love one another as he commanded us. Then 1 John five thirteen, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. Or believe on the name of the Son of God, rather. That you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So this name is better than the angel's. Do you know that? Hebrews 1 verse 4. Being made so much better than the angels. Notice what it says. As he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. This is a more excellent name. And Jesus inherited his name. Now let me hold that a minute. John 5, 43, Jesus said, I am come in my Father's name. Now doesn't it say that? My name's Bear because my Father's name was Bear. I remember in junior high school, the teacher, English teacher said, write a term paper on your family history. And boy, I really... I waxed eloquent. I wrote my great, 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 great grandfather founded the Bayer Aspirin Company. Told a big lie. I did. And I know she got a big chuckle out of that. I know. You know, I was in the ninth grade. I was trying. But I did inherit my name. Now, please understand, I'm, this requires your attention. Stay with me now. Luke 2, 21. Brother David put that on the screen. I'm trying to pause a few seconds to give you time, which he does a wonderful job. And I appreciate that. But Luke 2, 21. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus. Now notice what it says which was so named of the angel before. Everybody say before. Before. He was conceived in the womb. Before. Now, he inherited his father's name. And before he was even conceived in the womb, he was called Jesus. Now, my brothers and sisters... If this be true, and it is, then the name of the Father is Jesus. Remember, Jesus said, John 17, verse 6. John 17, verse 6. And I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou givest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou givest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now dropping down to verse 26. John 17, Jesus said, And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it. And we're still declaring it. That the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. So Jesus, so named of the angel before he was conceived, In his mother's womb. And he came in his father's name. And he obtained a more excellent name than the angels. Then I read in Philippians 2, 9. Now listen to this carefully. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name. When did he give it? Before he was conceived in the womb. And given him a name. Which is above every name. Above every name. 
that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So he was given the name before he was conceived in the womb and God gave him that name and he came in his father's name and he called his name Jesus. Now how else can you get any plainer? To you who hold the baptism in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is valid? Answer me this. Matthew one twenty one, she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name son? No. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. So the name of the son is not son. So therefore the name of the father is not father. Because Jesus came in his father's name, and God gave him a name before he was conceived in a womb. And again, John 5:43, I'm coming my father's name. Amen. In fact, I, I won't get off too far on this. I get to preaching this stuff just zips through my little 10 cent brain. I thought of Philipp- or excuse me, Ephesians 3:19, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. And then it came to me, 1 Corinthians 14:25, uh, when you have the Holy Ghost that Men may say that God is in you of a truth. And then it came to me in 1 Corinthians 3.16. No, you're not. You're the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. And Ephesians 4.4 said there isn't but one Spirit. Now this one Spirit God in you, and yet Christ is in you according to Galatians 2.20. Christ liveth in me, and Colossians 1.27 where it talks about Christ is in you. Now, all I'm saying is there's not but one spirit, and this spirit is referred as God is in you, and Christ is in you. And we all know Acts 2, 4, that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And 2 Timothy 1, 14, the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. You don't have three spirits in you. There isn't but one. And Paul called that one spirit God. Paul called that one spirit Christ in you. Paul called that one spirit the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in you. Now you're not going to argue with the man who wrote over two-thirds of the New Testament. And Paul called it Jesus. So the name of the Father is not Father, but Jesus. The name of the Son is not Son, but Jesus. And it's simple, the name of the Holy Ghost. What didn't Jesus say? I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you, John 14, 18. And verse 20, at that day you shall know I'm in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Now, I could go on here in John 14 and 26, and John 15, 26. When Jesus said, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Why does the Holy Ghost come at the mentioning of the name of Jesus? Don't you come when your name's called? All I'm trying to tell you folks cataclysmically and definitively and unalterably and inimitably, straight up, there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's the only name we anoint the sick. That's the only name we're going to water baptize into. That's the only name that can cast out devils. That's the only name that can save your husband and your children and your wife. That's the only name that can save a drunkard and a harlot and a liar and a thief and a dope addict. Hallelujah! I am not castigating and I'm not going to get sidetracked here. The self-help social programs, which I applaud and appreciate from many areas that try to help people hooked on bad habits and drugs and depression and so on. I'm not making any slap at that, but I know a name that every devil in hell and out of hell 
and every unclean spirit is subject to. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish I could preach. I wish I could preach. Oh, some of you, if you'd get a hold of this, you wouldn't be missing another service. You'd be joining up with us in exalting that name and praising that name and shouting that name. Hallelujah. Well, let me go on here real quick. That it was better than the angels. And I haven't just a few minutes left. Oh, God. If you don't help me, Lord, I ain't going to make it. That's all. So let me go to one more. And I won't be probably able to discuss this definitively. But the Bible teaches we're to call on that name. Now, show me how to call on that name. Well, let me start with Acts 2.21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You pronounce. You enunciate. You speak out. You open your mouth. And you cry out to that name. In Acts 9, verse 14, Ananias being told of Saul, he was in the house, that he was blind, and anyhow, that Ananias, you go pray for him, sort of argued with God and saying, in verse 14 of Acts 9, that he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. Call on thy name. And then going to verse 21, Ananias went on and told the Lord, Is not this he that destroyed them which called upon this name in Jerusalem? Called upon it. I'm going to jump to James 2 verse 7. This is a beautiful little obscure verse, but it says, Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called. Many translations render that which was called over you. Now, when Ananias baptized Saul of Tarsus, Paul recorded that in Acts 22.16 of Ananias saying, And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized. And wash away thy sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. Some versions read that, having his name invoked over you. Now this has to refer to water baptism in Jesus' name. For Paul himself said in Romans 6, 3, Know ye not that so many of us, that meant himself included, as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into his death. Verse 4, therefore we are buried with him, not them, him, by baptism into death. And Paul was admonished to call upon the name of the Lord. Now let me nail that down with a good example. And I thought, well, what would be a good one? And it came to me way back in First Kings Brother David, flip that up there. First Kings 17. Let's go to verse 26. First Kings 17, verse 26. Uh, no, let me correct that. First Kings 18, 26. This is when Elijah confronted the prophets of Baal. Now, I won't preach that. That's, a, that's another time. But he challenged them to a contest that they would offer a sacrifice and the God that answers by fire, let him be God. So the priests of Baal went first. And in verse 26 it said, and they took took the bullock which was given them and they dressed it. Now catch this. 
and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, Oh, Baal, help us. Now that's how you call someone's name. You say their name. Lord, have mercy. We ought to all be saying, Oh, Jesus, help us. And that'll preach, friend. You got depression? Oh, Jesus, help us. You got a bad habit you can't shake? Oh, Jesus, help us. You got a husband or a wife or children that need to get into church? You ought to be saying, Oh, Jesus, help us. Call his name. Call his name. That's the reason when we water baptize, we call his name. And so they were saying, Oh, Baal, help us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. <laughs> this gets a little touchy. I'm not going to try to preach all this. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. Now, this gets kind of hairy when you start mocking people. But when you got the absolute, invincible, unalterable truth, you can be definitive. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. If you pray to Mary, or you pray to... I'm trying my best. (laughs) Or you pray to Stone Mountain, Georgia, or you pray to Buddha, or Confucius, or Um Mani Pani, Um Mani Pani, Um Mani Pani, Um trying to get nirvana, state of passionless peace over, out of the endless wheel of incarnation, blah, 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 blah. I'm just telling you, you're wasting your time. Pray to any man, you're wasting your time. Came to pass at noon, Elijah mocked them and said, cry loud. Poor Elijah, I look forward to meeting him. He was one tough cookie, although a woman put him on the run, but a lot of men can do good until their wives tell them to jump and they say how high on the way up. Now you think I'm being funny. I'm really not. Your wife wants to stay home. It's legitimate. Let her stay home, but you come on to church. What I'm at it, I feel to say this, and, and you can't fire me because you didn't hire me. <laughs> but I feel to say this, if you feel definitively that God has spoken for you to do or go somewhere, and no matter if your wife or your husband says no, you obey God rather than man. <laughs> didn't Peter say, save yourself? Anyhow, let me get back. The king of Pass at noon, Elijah mocked him and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is talking or he is pursuing. And in this congregation, I don't want to explain what that word pursuing. You, you, you look it up. It's really kind of funny. But Elijah mocked him. For he is, either he is talking or he is pursuing or he is in a journey or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awake. That's tough stuff. He stood up there and and there was 700 of them prophets of Baal. And he, he mocked them. Now, I'm sorry, but I just have to be honest with you. You call on any other name, you're wasting your time. And I'm going to say something else. You go to any other church that don't baptize in the name of Jesus Christ or preach that he is the one true God and the name of Jesus Christ in baptism, you're wasting your time. And you're wasting your money. Don't you send money to a TV evangelist that baptizes in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You're wasting your time. And you got to give me just, I got about three, four minutes left. Well, and let me go on here with Elijah. And I just want to show you real quick. I'm not going to preach at all. 1 Kings 18, now you jump to verse 36, Brother David. 36. 
And it came to pass at the time of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel and that I am thy servant and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God. And that thou hast turned their heart back again. You know what the Bible said? Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. Oh, I'm preaching to you. Jesus is the God. Jesus is the everlasting Father. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Stand with me, please. I want everybody to say Acts 4.12 with me one more time. Oh, I hope it gets into your heart. And sold in mind say it with me neither is there salvation in any other for there is and if you believe that clap your hands I mean clap your hands clap your hands hands. 